Two huge doubts in the banks that wouldn't let me sleep. I couldn't find a way out of it. I spent my time in depression and crying. I was really drowning in debt. I was a person who owed almost $200,000. I had a ton of debts for like 20 years. I was feeling down in the dumps. I started to let go, to leave behind the fears, to leave behind the doubts. I managed to free myself from everything from that heavy and painful burden. I felt calm and confident speaking to the Department of Criteria and presenting them with my payment proposal. I've already paid off all the debts and I almost have this house completely bought. I have enough money now because previously I didn't have enough. I had six investments. Imagine getting rid of a $200,000 debt and on top of that, having something to invest now. It's awesome, thanks a lot. It's a total blessing, and I mean like a really big one, like huge. I'm happy because I'm free. Hello there, how are you? Greetings to all. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the DC6 class. That's right, the DC6 class of our Biblical Finance Intensive. We are thrilled to have you here. How great that you're here, yum. The topic today is how do you start getting your finances under control? Where are the highly committed ones, highly committed ladies? Get in touch with me in the chat right now. Hashtag incredibly dedicated, incredibly dedicated. We extend a warm welcome to you as you join our class 16. Let's see, so that we can start this important class today, I wanna to tell you that it's great to see you all here again. And I would like to know if there are any new people here and where they're from and where each of you lives, okay? Let's see, let's see. Yes, how tasty, good. Well, now, just to inform you, the class we have today is extremely, extremely special. And as you are already aware, in this context, we have already had discussions about debts, investments, additional business income, and a wide range of other topics. We discussed multiple biblical principles of finance, but beginning from tomorrow, which is Thursday, it is crucial to pay attention to this. Tomorrow, Thursday, that's right. Tomorrow, the second stage of the Christian week, I control my finances will begin, which will address all these topics in a practical and profound way, okay? Stay connected to the intensive WhatsApp group, regardless of the circumstances. Yeah, you see, because tomorrow I will send you the link to Masterclass 1 of this class in the group, all right? And become a member of the Facebook community, which will be free of charge starting from tomorrow. And below the video, yes, of this video here, of Class 1, oh, sorry, below the Masterclass 1, yes, the Masterclass 1 of the Christian Week, yes, there will be a button available for access. So you can become a member of the Christian Week Facebook community, all right? And there you can obtain access to your exercise notebook for this class, all right? Oh, you can speak now. But doctor, then what should I do? Look, during our Christian Week, you will perform the exercises, and at the end, I will provide you with additional information, okay? And if you're not yet in the WhatsApp group for the Biblical Finance Intensive, access the link that is down here below this video. At this moment, is everything fine? Is there a web link available for the Biblical Finance Intensive group, right? You just need to be in one group, okay? You don't need to be in more than one group, okay? And today I keep bringing you Yes, yes, I'm still here, bringing you valuable content for your financial metanoia, which is the transformation of your mind. Now I ask you, who here wants to have their finances under control, have extra money and start investing to fulfill God's dreams in your life? Do you want to? Yes or yes? So look, in our last class, I covered the topic of the multiplication law, you know? And the significance of multiplying the seeds that God places in your hands, isn't it, right? And if you haven't seen this class and the previous classes yet, let me tell you that they're still here on my YouTube channel. But very soon, all the classes will be taken down. So watch them. Don't miss out. Stay with me until the end of today's class, and I will tell you more news about the Christian week. I have control over my finances, which starts tomorrow. 
Remember that the Christian week is the second stage of this intensive. It's a continuation that starts tomorrow. And they're not just recorded classes. It is a comprehensive experience to get you started on taking the initial steps towards your transformation. Many individuals are still registering for the event. Numerous individuals are currently arriving, so I would like to express my gratitude to all the highly dedicated individuals who have recommended this course to others using their referral link. That's awesome. This makes me very happy and I'm sure that by recommending the course to recommending the course to other individuals, you are also sowing significant seeds for yourself. I am fully aware of it. And since I see that there are new people here and in respect to them, I'll give a quick and brief introduction about myself, okay? Look, I'm Dr. Taylor Campos, an economist and lawyer, an expert in debts, and I spent years of my life living as a slave to loans and debts until I learned the solution for good financial management. It's in practice, yes, of biblical principles about finances. And this turned into my calling, my life's mission. Today, thousands of lives have been transformed with the teachings that I bring here today. Really? That is scrumptious. Oh yes, scrumptious. So listen up folks, check out how my student Leandro, yeah, my mentee Leandro, managed to get out of his debts and transformed into an investor in just a span of 60 days, which is quite remarkable. See Leandro's case for building up your life. It's a significant Christian presence here. And I'm personally here today to testify about some of the miracles which have been manifesting in our life, in my life, in my family's life, diligently through the program. When we started the program, we were quite in debt. And with all the guidance we received in this program, we have strategically managed to reduce the total sum of our loans to merely $2,500, bring down the allowable overdraft limit to just $2,000, and significantly cut back on our overall credit card expenses aiming to greatly enhance our financial standing and stability, thus improving our economic health. We have significantly reduced the costs related to water usage, electricity consumption, and internet services for our household, which has resulted in substantial savings amounting to $2,100 on an annual basis. Today, we have successfully managed to save a substantial amount of money directly from our salaries, and under the expert guidance and highly recommended advice of Vista Rio's professional team, we have strategically invested it into promising opportunities that are expected to yield significant returns. I want to thank everyone. Heartfelt thanks for the support from Crystal Rio. May God bless you. Awesome. Unbelievable, the case of Leandro. And if you've just arrived here, right here in this course, you should know that Leandro's case is not an isolated case. No. I have already displayed over 20 testimonials from various individuals who have accomplished similar transformations by implementing the technique I created for financial management, which is grounded in biblical principles. And I could remain in this location for the upcoming couple of days, demonstrating to you videos of individuals who underwent a comparable transformation, affirmative. So I am aware that it may sound too good to be true, but I want you to know today that it is indeed highly possible and you simply need to know the method or technique to accomplish it. So write it to me in the chat. It's possible, it's possible. And in today's class, I want to focus on answering a question that many people ask me. Shall we? Shall we go together? Yes, do you want to know? Yes, that's how it is. Doctor, I've seen the testimonials, but I have a question. The question is, well, well, where do I start to get a handle on my finances? Yes, it's a really important question. Look, everything originates in our mind with the process of making decisions. You know what I'm trying to convey? If you haven't seen the class on the mindset of the thriving Christian, it's really important that you understand it. Okay. When your decisions are based on principles, on the rock, they are much more solid. Right or right? Because your decisions are founded on solid ground. Who is the rock of the Christians? The unshakable foundation of their faith. It's Jesus Christ. 
right? And when I see a lot of financial educators teaching many things on the internet, but the fact is that I need to warn you today that a big part of them are not teaching according to biblical principles of finance. Yeah, yeah, I must inform you of this right now. Yes, I need to have fun. It is crucial for me to prioritize enjoyment in my life. And I am aware, and you are aware as well, that the principles found in the Bible are significantly more powerful than any individual rule that has ever been created by mankind. Therefore, our main objective in this context is to modify our mindset in order to align with the principles outlined in the Bible. In the class that took place yesterday, I had a conversation with you during the evening regarding 12 significant principles found in the Bible. And if I have time, I'll go over them here with you all today again. But I want to reinforce here with you some fundamental principles that I didn't delve into in yesterday's class. Are we together? Yes, together. Let's go with this class. I will begin with a highly significant principle for you to commence gaining control over your finances. One, the initiation of stewardship. Look, if you have faith in the Bible, I must inform you of an important matter. Your money ain't yours. What is up, doctor? Yes, you believe in the Bible. The Bible I have is exactly the same as the one you have. Yes, affirmative or affirmative. Look, apologies, so examine this. The Bible provides teachings that there are two sides of responsibility when it comes to matters of finance and wealth. One obligation is God's and the other portion is our duty that we are responsible for and must fulfill accordingly. So your money isn't yours. I'm telling you seriously, because when I see someone with financial problems, I immediately think, what part has this person neglected? Yes, that's right, because God never fails to do his part. So I start talking to this person who soon tells me, doctor, I don't know why God allows me to go through so many financial problems. And in this sentence, I already realized that the primary problem is that this person doesn't have an understanding of the biblical foundation for handling finances. Great. Yes, yes, kindly pay attention because I am speaking at the moment and it is important. Come on, come on, let's take it easy because the content is extremely important today. Look, why does God's role, surely he has already accomplished it. God never fails to deliver. Yes or yes, yes. What this person was lacking was understanding. The Bible categorically states that God is the sole owner of everything. Look at your Bible now in Psalm 24, 1, which says this, The Lord owns the land and everything in it, the world and those who inhabit it, no doubt about it. Please look now in your Bible in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 8. What does it say? The silver belongs to me, the gold belongs to me, declares the Lord of hosts. Farewell to eight, yeah? Therefore, let us proceed. So, for example, I could cite numerous additional verses that support the idea that everything originates from God, correct? And the Jews even know it very well, and it's no wonder they are one of the most prosperous nations in the world. If we want to be followers of Christ, we must recognize that God is the boss of everything we have. If you cannot give up everything you have, you are probably not following Jesus. Refer to Luke 14.33. The passage states that anyone unwilling to relinquish all possessions cannot become a disciple of mine. Great, seriously? I observe here that it's a premise to pursue Christ relinquishing all and recognizing that God is the genuine proprietor of everything, correct? Now you're going to think, I know, oh, well, now you're going to tell me that everything I have belongs to the church. No, 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 it's not like that. Of course not. No, 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 no. I'll explain it to you better in a minute. Yeah, pay attention. It's not any of that. The reality is that God tests us on occasion posing the question of whether we are truly willing to surrender all of our possessions, including the ones 
that hold the deepest place in our hearts. God is observing our heart. Yeah, yeah, that is how it happened with the rich young man who made the decision to hold on to his wealth. In a class, they discussed the history of the wealthy young man. Yes, do you recall? Do you recall it? Yes. Another illustration of this in the Bible is when the Lord communicated with Abraham. It can be found in Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. Look at your Bible now, Genesis 22, verse 2, which goes like this. Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and offer him there as a burnt offering. Tough, yeah. And when Abraham gave up the most precious possession he had, his son, God provided a lamb for the offering and spared Isaac. Because it was indeed the heart, yes, the heart of Abraham that was undergoing testing at that particular location. If everything we are and everything we have belongs to God, then we must live as good stewards, managing well what belongs to the Lord in a responsible and diligent manner. Yes, oh yes, and this is the most important concept of biblical finances. Yeah, look, Jesus utilized the concept of stewardship and implemented it to us. Look now in your Bible in Luke 12, verse 42, which goes like this. The Lord provided an answer asking, who then is the faithful and prudent steward? To whom his master puts in charge of his servants to give them their meal prayer at the right time. Happy is the servant whom his master finds doing it when he returns. I assure you that he will appoint you as the person in control of all your assets. So how can we engage in good stewardship? Look, even though in this parable that I've told you, Jesus Christ was mainly referring to spiritual things. He didn't fail to include the natural and financial aspect, since our assets are also his. Why or oh why? We will be held accountable for what we do with what he has given us. Observe, our life, our family, our home, and our possessions are the property of the Lord, and we must handle everything as something he has entrusted to us for management and stewardship. Yes, a portion of our money goes back to God in the form of contributions. Of course it does, but the rest still belongs to him and must be used correctly, well managed, right? Who's here with me, right? Yeah, where are the good administrators, the ones who want to be good administrators of God? Yeah, write it to me in the chat. I desire to, I desire to, I desire to experience the principles of good stewardship in my life. I want to be obedient to God in my financial life. I want to have financial peace. This is a principle that must be understood and lived even before contribution, which is just a small aspect of management. Yeah. Check this out then. Look, look, this is extremely important here. Pay attention to that. That's why I always say that you should not just be faithful in the 10% or whatever is given to God, but you must be faithful 100%. Because in accordance with the teachings of the Bible, everything is the property of God. Take a look. God has a disapproval towards your actions of doing things wastefully, you know. This is the concept of stewardship. With attention, we are just administrators and we must be able to manage everything that God gives us well according to his principles. And inside this is multiplication, which was one of the 12 principles that I taught you yesterday. Yes, it was taught in our class. Yes, look, there's another one. Let's continue. The class today is tough, you know. Look, there's more to learn. When reading the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, 14 to 30, we find that this concept of management applies to all areas of our life, including the financial area. Honoring the Lord with our possessions encompasses practicing good stewardship. God entrusts us with what belongs to him. And yet he grants us the liberty to derive enjoyment from what has been entrusted to us. Hey, Lucas, check out that 913 over there. 
The team that the chef Lucas works for is amazing. He called 10 of his servants and gave them forgiveness of 10 minas. Then he told them to negotiate until I come. They put in a lot of effort. Can't wait to see the outcome. Mm, yes, Luke 19, 13. However, you see the fact that he leaves us the choice and the decision of what we will do with what he grants us does not necessarily mean that there is not an objectively correct or prescribed right way to manage what is his, right? Look, something very, very important. God expects faithfulness from his stewards. The person who is faithful in little things will also be faithful in much. Similarly, the person who is unjust in little things will also be unjust in much. This is in Luke 16.10. I will explain it to you better here, Luke. Pay attention now. Jesus is not merely discussing honesty, but also emphasizing the importance of loyalty and its significance in our lives. And this means that a good administrator is not only the one who doesn't steal or harm their boss, no, but also the one who sticks to the purpose that has been entrusted to them and manages everything that is entrusted to them, no matter what. It's more than loyalty and trust. It's the dedication to what has been agreed upon. Focus on this with enthusiasm. We're thrilled for our class. It's amazing. Where are we fully committed, fully committed? Yes, please write it to me in the chat. Hashtag super committed. Look, God expects a greater level of commitment from us than just good intentions and sincerity alone. Yes, oh yes, it is the expectation of God that we are required to follow the instructions he has given us and the purpose that has been revealed in his word. Do you understand? So now examine your Bible. Team, place it in the chat. 1 Corinthians 4.2 which is written as follows. That males regard us as ministers of Christ and administrators of the mysteries of God's divine revelations and spiritual truths. In addition, it is a requirement for administrators that each one is found to be faithful and trustworthy. Behold, behold, loyal, yes, faithfulness. Now listen, stewardship not only involves the proper management of our belongings, but also of the abilities and talents that the Lord has entrusted to each and every one of us, each and every individual. It is our responsibility to faithfully steward these gifts and use them for the glory of God and the benefit of others. Examine your Bible in 1 Peter 4.10 now, which states this. Allow each individual to handle the gift to others as they have received it, similar to competent administrators of God's varied grace. Yes, oh yes, all of us have gifts and talents and we must be good stewards. It is located within the Bible. If you have faith in the Bible, this is the one. I have faith in the Bible. You think? Yeah? So it is not me who is talking about this. It is in the Bible. The Bible works for you, right? Because it works for me. And the other day, I even replied to a message on social media, on Instagram. If you possess Instagram, we are present at where the individual was like, oh, I am unable to cook. I am unable to sew. I have no source of income. What actions should I take? Listen up. This is important. I replied to him, her. Awesome. We're now narrowing down possibilities. Yes. Why? Now that you've said everything you don't know, start telling me what you know how to do. That is the way you are going to start doing what you love. And we will reach here to your talents, to your gifts. Because perhaps you are unaware that you lack awareness. And there may be actions you could take to generate additional income and begin managing your finances. Do you comprehend? Yeah, yeah. You shouldn't focus on what you don't know, but on what you do know, what you can do, and maybe you don't even know that you don't know. Yeah, there are things that are like that. And the things that change you frequently are the things that you don't even know you do not know. Utilize your talents effectively, including your financial resources, that is the money that flows through your hands, as well as your gifts, abilities, time, priorities, and focus. 
it's not a lack of time, it's a lack of priority. All of that is also talents that using them wisely is also a greater Christian mastery. Awesome, awesome. Yes, are they here with me? Yes, who is here with me? Yes, does it make sense to you? Write it to me in the chat. Yeah, 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 are they here? Look, look, so I'm not just talking about money here. I'm talking about any Italian gift to serve God's purposes. Anything that God entrusts to us, we must remember that our relationship with money is crucial. It serves as a significant indicator of our heart's attitude towards stewardship in general. Therefore, it is important to recognize the value of managing our resources well. After all, how we handle what God has given us reflects our true character, doesn't it? And this is really important. A very important step here that you must be clear about is about being accountable. Yes, this is truly significant. Take note, Christ also taught us that stewardship is a temporary responsibility, a caretaking of what belongs to someone else, another individual. Affirmative or affirmative. And the genuine owner will then carry out an obligation of the governance in the aftermath. Yeah, you have a calling, you have a mission. And will there be an accountability about this? Examine now in Luke 16, verses 1 and 2. Observe your Bible at this moment. Team, put in the chat Luke 16, verses 1 and 2, which goes like this. He also told his disciples that there was a rich man who had a manager, and he was accused before him of squandering his possessions. And he called him and said, What is this that I hear about you? Give an account of your administration because you can no longer be my administrator. There will be an account statement, yes. We have other biblical examples, yes, of good stewardship that is praised and also of bad stewardship that is punished. There are biblical examples of good stewardship that is praised and also of bad stewardship that is punished. No one can escape responsibility. We see it in the examples we witness it in the examples that Jesus presented in the parable of the ten minas and in the parable of the talents. It is in Luke 19 verse 15. Therefore, please check it out. And it came to pass that when he came back after obtaining the kingdom, he instructed to summon those servants to whom he had entrusted the money in order to find out how much each of them had gained through their trading. That is located in the book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 15. Now please retrieve your Bible and turn to another verse, Matthew 25, 19. About the words of the talents, right? And after a long time, the master of those servants settled accounts with them, when the account keeps going. Yes, so this is an emphasis that is present throughout the Bible. In the letter to the Hebrews, for instance, it is evident that the responsibility is for each and every individual. Nothing will escape God's notice. Check Hebrews 4.13 in your Bible. It says, No creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. On the other hand, everything is exposed and revealed in the sight of the one to whom we must give an account and be held responsible for our actions. Yeah, absolutely. Do you understand? Have you experienced it? Message me in the chat. Yeah, yeah, I am present. So make sure I'm here as your mentor. If tomorrow we're going to start the Christian week, I'll keep an eye on my finances. What is manos a la obra? I know that often having your finances under control is not simple. I know I've been through this. Today I have my finances under control. I make money to spare, but it wasn't always like that. And I desire to provide you with all the knowledge that I possess for you, yeah? And it's important that you check out Masterclass 1 tomorrow, which is the Christian week of I Control My Finances, because it's really important for you for your learning. Okay, so look, you will also have to be accountable to God for the money he has put in your hands. I am fully confident in this. So please write this sentence in the chat to ensure it gets a lot of attention on this matter. I will also give an account to God for the money he has entrusted to me.
I repeat, I will also be accountable to God for the money he has entrusted to me. And God is extremely fair, so fair that he explicitly states he places the ability of every individual in a subordinate position. Yes. Yes, it is in accordance with the capabilities of each individual that everything is determined. Look, some people are afraid of being held accountable as if they weren't capable of handling what God has entrusted to them. But there is an unquestionable principle in the stewardship instituted by God. Do you know what it is? Yes, God in his wisdom and justice, glorious justice of God's divine wisdom and perfect justice. He will never ask anyone to do something that they are unable to do. Absolutely not. He never treats us in the same manner that he treats others. It is as if he is conducting transactions in large quantities. No, 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 it's not this. God knows our limitations and our ability, but if you have the ability, you should do this because there will be an accountability and you will be held responsible for your actions. And God is aware that we are not all identical and that a combination of various factors places each of us in significantly distinct positions and circumstances before him. Look, in Matthew 24, 14, it says like this, to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his ability. Therefore, in this place, we possess the ultimate key to experiencing true prosperity. Take a moment to observe, to truly see. So take a look at this. We must grasp the biblical principles of finances and apply them to our life in order to prosper. We must indeed know the laws of the money game that God has defined in his word, in the Bible. And based on your ability to take action in accordance with these laws, it will provide you with additional resources. Yes. So you want God to put more money in your hands? Yes or yes. Boost your talents. This is very important. Check out your talents. Do more with your talents. Invest in your financial intelligence. And that is of utmost importance. That is precisely what my mentee Patricia accomplished with tremendous success. Patricia invested in knowledge and in just 60 days, she cleared her name from the credit control agencies, a collection agency, and went from being in debt to being an investor. Take a look at Patricia's case for constructing and shaping your life. And thank God that we did, because through the diligent and persistent work of Rich Christian, through the expertise of Dr. Taylor, through the knowledge acquired within a span of 60 days, I successfully managed to pay off. Three of my loans, was able to clear my name in the credit protection service and achieved a balance in my finances that aligns well with my budget. Doing more with less, making extra income, finally. Thanks to this effort, I have moved from being in debt to becoming an investor through the knowledge gained. I can say today, thanks to God and to Wealthy Christian, that I, Patricia, control my finances. Super, yes, how incredible. And if you also want to get, sorry, if you want to have that kind of transformation and seek this knowledge to put it into practice now and become a better steward, I invite you to sign up and participate in the Christian Week I Control My Finances, which starts tomorrow. Make sure to stay connected to your WhatsApp. We will be publishing Masterclass 1 tomorrow morning, so don't forget to stay tuned and keep an eye out. Yeah, yeah. So be sure to pay attention to the WhatsApp group for the intensive course, okay? Christian Week Masterclass 1 is starting bright and early tomorrow morning, okay? You must have seen that Patricia said she needed to learn to do more with less, and that is precisely what makes the distinction in your life. There are individuals who believe they must save no matter what, and that approach does not work, and it only leads to you having an increasingly limited mindset and a lack of abundance. Look, there is some important content, some important learning here. Where are we super committed? Pay attention. We are in a warm up. Tomorrow, the Christian week of I Control My Finances is going to start. You got to prioritize your financial life. Yeah, he must want to. Yeah, because today I don't have any spots available for my mentorship. But if a lot of people need it, I'll think about opening a few spots, right? There are some people who already say, look, I want mentoring, but stay tuned here. Today, I don't have any availability. 
You got to pay attention to this content right here because it's the foundation. It's the rock, you know, so that you have your finances under control because I know you want to have your finances under control. I know you want to make money to spare. I know you want to start investing to make God's dreams come true in your life. And pay attention to this. A good manager doesn't work in scarcity. No. Work in abundance and manage with knowledge wisely what God entrusts to you. Take a look at Joseph of Egypt. I did not experience scarcity, just like a competent manager. Now that you've understood that you're a steward of God so that you can continue with this process of having your finances under control, I want to reinforce with you an important revelation that exists in the word of the lance. I'll tell you something that I take very seriously in my mentoring sessions, and it's a very practical part of my method, okay? Pay attention here. Look, there are a lot of financial educators you know, who say that what you need to do is earn more. They say, I just need to earn more, earn more, and soon. However, let me tell you, thinking like that is not in accordance with biblical teachings. No, if you are not faithful with the small amount that passes through your hands, earning a larger amount will only serve to amplify the size of your hole. Yeah, pay attention, you hear me? Yes, look, without a doubt, you should definitely make an effort to increase your income. And this is what I teach my students in a deep way in my mentoring. This was even the topic of one of our classes. I had a brief conversation where I discussed the topic of the increase in income in a small manner. But I desire for you to comprehend that there exists an order. And it is significant. God is satisfied with order, with fear, with obedience. And that our God is a God of order. Yes or yes. So make sure to write it down. Are you currently enjoying our class? Affirmative or affirmative? Yes, permit me to like it, yes. We are nearing the end of our class, so let us proceed. Write it down. That part about optimizing your expenses and spending with a purpose is always the first thing. It's always like starting to have your finances under control. So if you want to learn and also do more with less, I'll show you in the classes of the Christian week I control my finances especially in the reinforcement classes with bonus content. The reinforcement classes of our Christian week will be extremely, extremely special. So be on the lookout for the classes in the WhatsApp group because it is really important. You must be, all right? Because our reinforcement sessions, apologies, there will not be any repetition, correct? These will be classes without recording, okay? And the other recorded classes stay in the air for a short period of time. So I'm looking at who the super committed ones are and just the curious ones who don't really want to change their financial lives, you know? Let's keep going here. Another important thing that I will teach you in the second stage is that it's really important to have goals, to have a target to know where you want to go, to have a clear understanding of where you are and what your financial path is. And that will also be a class in Christian week. I control my finances. Why? Because it's really important to have clarity about your financial life. But don't worry today because I'm already getting you ready here for what awaits you, okay? In our warm-up phase, now you can talk, doctors, you talk a lot about Christian week, don't you? Look, I've already informed you that these classes are the preparation for the second stage of the event which is Christian week. Let's start working. Due to the fact that we will also possess a workbook, a Facebook community, and various practical activities. So I'm preparing myself for it. We are in need of this metanoia, this change of mindset that is crucial for our progress. And a lot of people ask me like, doctor, so how do you know if you're handling well what little you have? It's a very important question. Another one, how can I determine if I am truly being an effective manager? Look, one of the most valuable inquiries to address this is, pay attention. Do you handle your finances to satisfy your wishes or with a specific objective? Please pay attention. If at the moment when the money is in your hands, it has a goal, it has a purpose, or it is like an eagle, it disappears completely without a trace. 
Most of the time when a person is in debt or has financial problems, it is because they got into debt because they did not have any purpose for the little money that passed through their hands. And when you do not manage the little well, God does not require or expect a lot. No. God is a God of justice. Yeah, yeah. And that person wasted a seed on something that had no purpose. You get it? For example, a person goes to the supermarket, something more common, or embarks on a big shopping trip with the house financed and their interests, but then changes their mind or only later realizes that it doesn't fit the budgetary constraints. This is just an example of a waste, of the consequences of a bad decision. In fact, yes, owning a home is one of the largest factors contributing to debt, yes. But if you want to buy your house, of course I support you. Yeah, it's good. But I'm just not a fan of doing it, doing it without planning, without goals, without strategy. You must have your finances in check, as this can end up costing you a lot and potentially jeopardize your financial peace of mind. Yes, without a purpose with your money, and even with an enormous ease of credit that many have access to nowadays, it is spent unconsciously, and the desire speaks louder than the need, than the goals, than the objectives, than the financial tranquility. The desire becomes more powerful than the purpose. Are you all present? Look, in this case, do you have awareness of what the consequence of wasting the seeds is? You know? Yeah, you know, a question for you. The pain of debt and financial troubles. Yeah, yeah. Look, as the sonista says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I have no doubt about this. But if you let desire be stronger than purpose, the money will be needed elsewhere. Yeah, having a clear purpose of what to do with the money that God puts in your hands, for instance. You're going to start a business. Awesome. How are you going to do this? Have you evaluated the risks? What is the number of individuals you are planning to serve? Do you possess a game plan? A mayor is not the person with the highest number of servants, but the person who serves the highest number of individuals. We have previously discussed this topic in our other class. Yes, yes. Do you happen to recall the details? We've also talked about the servitude law here too. Yes, that's really important. Jesus said, if you want to be the top dog, be everyone's servant. Here's the law of servitude too. And if you have a purpose with your money, one day or more you won't be a slave to money and you will make him work for you and for God's purposes. Yes, we're finally reaching the end and boy are we excited because tomorrow we'll have our Christian week. Who is going to observe the class during the initial period? Yeah, yeah, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow you must make sure to visit class one, yeah. I want to go back to what I said before for you. Pay attention. What? God gives us according to each person's ability. To give you a further understanding of what I'm talking about, you always have to look into what your current ability is today. Have you ever heard that the wealthy get wealthier every day and the poor get poorer with each passing day? Now, do you comprehend that this is biblical? That is correct. Verify it. That is correct. Observe. Yes, it's in the Bible. And God will give you according to your ability to manage. What's your management capacity like today, admin? There's a lot of talk about trusting in God. A lot of folks think they don't have to worry about managing the resources that God entrusts to their hands. No, they must, yeah. Because everything is His and everything is in God's hands. And He takes care of it all. However, these individuals tend to forget that God has already entrusted these things into our hands for us to handle. And what he wants to know at this particular moment is, what is the limit of what he can trust you with right now? So Pay attention. Look, there's a lot of talk about putting our trust in God, and I believe that's essential. I have no doubt. I trust in God. I have no doubt about this. But there's also a fundamental question. I often wonder if God can trust you. I wonder if God can entrust more blessings and responsibilities in your hands starting from today. So make sure to jot this down. One of the most effective ways to have trust in God is to demonstrate that I have trust in you. 
What you must understand is that a good father is not the one who provides his child with everything all at once, everything that the child desires, no. I'm a mom, I don't give my child everything. A good father is someone who gives their child what they are capable of handling during the process. My son is a boy, my son doesn't know how to drive a car, and I love him, that's why I don't give him a car. The better manager you are, the more he will put in your hands. God wants you to live the process. God desires for you to experience financial peace and avoid falling into traps. Additionally, commencing and acquiring the skill of driving are integral components of this process. You get it? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you that true success for me, yeah, lies in financial peace. And you have already learned here that financial peace is found in living the processes that God has established for our lives. It's in the obedience of the principles. So be good managers, even if it's just a penny that passes through your hands. You must be careful not to waste it. You should look into investing. You should look into things that will put more money in your pocket, that will make you a better manager of everything that God puts in your hands. That's what will allow you to have more and more, yes or yes. And one of these processes that shows if you're a good manager is the principle of multiplication. From our prior talks in other classes, right? One more tip, observe, pay attention. Yes, extremely delicious. Due to fear, individuals have concealed their talents similar to the unproductive servant mentioned in the Bible. They interred their talents out of fear. The fear of multiplication has led people to believe that those who are concerned about increasing their talents will be condemned to hellfire. The fear. Well, those who are concerned about multiplying are good administrators, faithful servants. The individuals who end up in hell are the greedy fools who crave the rewards without putting in the effort to go through the required process. And is God a God of justice? Does God perceive the depths of your heart? Has fear caused individuals to fall into the deceptive traps of the enemy's cunning and manipulation? The only thing the enemy of our souls wants is for you to think that taking care of your finances is not important. Because this is going to keep you without financial peace, with fights in your family and debts. And this is just what the enemy wants, which is to steal, kill and destroy your dreams. Yeah, because if you stay stuck like that without the tools to fulfill God's purposes in your life, you'll always be praying for liberation and never for God to open the way for you to do what needs to be done. And I hope that after today's lesson, you will be more conscious of what God desires for your financial life. And how do you begin the process of gaining control over your finances? Yeah, yeah because you must identify areas where you lack loyalty and efficiency, either in the spending or in the multiplication. Look, aren't you being a good manager with expenses? Do you have any investment? No. You may not have debts, but if you don't invest, you're not being a good manager. Yeah? Do this exercise with me now, and then you should start acting. Look, the exercise is, look, where are you not being a good manager? in the expenses or in the multiplication. Got it? I'm not saying that God promised to make you rich. Not it. Pay attention. Many people, when they see the name of the ministry, think it's heresy because God didn't promise wealth. No doubt. And it is true. He did not promise to make you wealthy. Being wealthy is to capture your attention. Yes. To see that finances are something important in your life. But the process of obeying the principles, that's important. This is in the Bible. Practicing good management leads to the creation of wealth. It is going to serve more people. And the good steward knows how to multiply everything that God puts in his hands. In other words, I'm trying to tell you that God wants you to start following the principles and to have your finances under control and to respect the processes that he teaches about finances in the word. Yes or yes. Look, and those who manage to complete the multiplication process end up generating wealth. 
Do you realize that wealth is the result of something natural, which is to fulfill good management and multiply your talents every day? Yes or yes, yes, we're going all the way to the end. And that's why those who seek wealth get into trouble and fall into traps, because wealth is not the ultimate goal. The focus is on obedience to the principle. It is obedience to God. It is financial peace. Wealth comes as a result of serving many people, of obedience. So stop listening to the voice of fear. Start listening to the principles that God wants you to learn and practice. Oh, so you can look now. I know. There are some people who need to practice patience more often. Patience is the fruit of the process. The seed process has a process and it will bear fruit, and it is a fruit of the Spirit. One of the fruits of the Spirit, according to the Bible, is patience, and patience must be harvested in the process. So you can inquire of me at this moment, Doctor. I still haven't comprehended. How do I commence acquiring my finances under control? I'll provide a step-by-step -step guide here at the end, okay? Yum. Super. Only for the super committed, the super committed who are here with me until the end, because tomorrow we'll start the Christian week, which is a classic master class one, a recorded class that'll be aired tomorrow morning. OK. Step by step one. How? How do I get started? One, be a good steward and strive every day to accomplish more with fewer resources. For instance, I require a gym, a gym that requires payment a gym located within the building, and I intend to exercise outdoors on the street. You have to choose. Consider how you can accomplish more with fewer resources that you already possess, all right? Create a list of your expenses and address each one. Approach it in this manner. Indeed, you have the ability to reduce or substitute this expense in order to achieve the same or greater results with fewer resources. It's a crucial question for every expense. This is the rationing of a good administrator. That is the expectation from God towards you as well. Look, God desires you to optimize and utilize every single penny you put in your hands for a specific purpose. Proceed to step two. Start now by multiplying this one cent that you already have in your hands to generate more wealth. I know that a lot of money has already gone through your hands. Yeah? What have you done with it? Look ahead now, initiate the search for financial wisdom to boost and multiply the value of this. How much time and resources have you devoted to learning more about finances? When I successfully completed one of the most challenging public exams in Brazil, I prayed to God for wisdom to succeed. Not asking, ah, I want to pass, you know, wisdom. Not asking for approval, knew that with wisdom would become someone more complete. And the more money is made known, the more money is made. But I did my part, right? What's up? I studied for numerous hours and hours. I relinquished other things in order to obtain wisdom. I went through the entire shebang. I obtained the wisdom that I required to be able to proceed and carry on with my journey. And today I see a lot of people waiting for wisdom and resources to fall from the sky. But look, the sentence is important. Yes, even we offer a course to get closer to God. We need to comprehend that this is extremely important. It is entirely about privacy. But remember, it's also necessary to pray and take action. Do your part. And always invest in acquiring more knowledge. The more you know how to generate income, I reiterate, the more money you will accumulate. And once again, even though the risk exists and can happen again, it's important for you to have no doubt that tomorrow our Christian week is going to start. And I'm telling you this with love because it's the biggest online event for Christians. And I know the content is really, really good. The Christian week is an exclusive and complimentary event exclusively for registered individuals. If you have not yet registered, ensure your place at the no cost Christian week below. Once you verify your email, be sure to register and become part of the WhatsApp group. OK, here in these classes, we're changing your mindset. We're in our warm up pack. There in the Christian week that starts tomorrow, we will get down to business with exercises and much more. Reinforcement classes, the secret of the bank's practical tools and more. Who desires this? 
if you want, write in the chat. I want to. So please pay attention to the schedules, okay? Because there will be some classes without recording. Now we're reaching the end of the class. So I'm going to give you today's class phrase. Write it down. Important for you, class phrase. Being loyal in the small things is accomplishing more with fewer resources. And now, please give our class a like down here. Even watch the documentary if you haven't seen it yet. Don't miss it, okay? And what's new in our second stage? Important. I stated that we would establish a Facebook community, yes, where we will have tasks to complete and you can share your exercises. We will also have at the end of our intensive the free certificate of participation and all that so you can have a complete one-of-a-kind experience at this event. It has a start day and an end day. Afterwards, he's going to miss me. I'm not going to be here forever. I want to serve you, and I want this to be the beginning of the financial transformation that you desire so much, like an answer to your prayer to God. Now, I restate the phrase from class, which is to be reliable in small things means doing more with less. And the designated keyword for the class is stewardship. Is that acceptable or do you have any objections? Stewardship, all right? So we have reached the conclusion of our class. May God bless you and we will see you in the near future. See you on the following day at our location. Our crystal week, I control my finances. Pay attention to the schedules of our classes in this second stage. They're going to change a bit. Yeah, yeah, see you in the WhatsApp group. Pay attention to all the communications over there. Okay? Yes, God bless you. Now, yes, and see you soon. Goodbye. Because after the rich Christian, I start to see life in a different way. My financial problems were fading away. A mortgage on my house, which I would take another eight years to pay off. I tell you that today I own a paid off house. There are several other debts that were troubling me and having the ability to do something that had not occurred in years in my life. Having extra money, having extra money of mine, my money never used to be extra. So managing to have some extra to invest as advised by the rich Christian in the portfolio we are following, following the completion of the course, I successfully managed to have some money left over from my salary, which was an achievement I hadn't been able to accomplish for a number of years. I managed to pay off the debts, a debt of 23,958, if I'm not mistaken at the time. In a span of 60 days, I managed to completely pay off this debt. This to me was an invaluable accomplishment that I can't put a price on. In addition to that debt, later on I also paid off another debt, so for me this was crucial. So at this point in time, now that I have a certain amount of money left over from my salary, I started making an investment as well. I began investing some money. And I did not have a car, I used to walk. I have a car now, it is not a fancy one, but I have a car in my garage now. This, in my opinion, is absolutely priceless. Wow, what an overwhelming feeling. I am filled with immense happiness and gratitude. I state that the wealthy Christian was positioned in my existence at a critical juncture. It was of utmost importance. So, the rich Christian was truly remarkable. It compelled me to completely empty myself and wholeheartedly believe that those incredible people were there to provide unwavering support, invaluable mentorship, and invaluable guidance on how to truly eliminate debts, achieve a well-balanced financial life, make wise investments, generate additional income, unearth hidden talents, and gain clarity on my desired path in life. I've already organized myself. I no longer have to borrow from loan sharks. I no longer have the private shops and businesses I had before because it was getting difficult. Everything is under control. My financial life is completely under control. I don't have that worry. One of the things I constantly had was power cuts. I couldn't handle it. Today I don't have. Sometimes I see a cutting car passing by and I breathe like this. Then I don't have. I'm calm. Everything is up to date. The year 2020 was the first year that ended that I ended with 1,500 reis. I can say, thanks to the rich Christian, I'm at peace. I can have a much calmer financial life. Financially, I'm not a slave to finances. The debts already existed, car financing, still paying for it, so there were quite a few things there. Open debts, paying for land in installments, right? So that bar where we stayed, wow, and now what are we going to do, right? And that's when I started studying.
I started the course slowly and began to see the transformations, many transformations. Reduction in bills, surprisingly, I learned to do extra activities that we didn't even pay attention to before because we were in our comfort zone. So I acquired new skills and knowledge. I established an online store through the course where they educate us on the importance of continuous self-improvement, undergoing a shift in mindset, thoughts and attitudes, and constantly striving to better ourselves. And that helped a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So with each step I took within the course, I saw the changes. And in the end, it was success, total success, both material and spiritual. It was wonderful. I had some loans which were insured. And there we learned how to reduce these loans, how to pay, how to pay off these loans. And we kept practicing this exercising control. For us, it wasn't enough to do things halfway. It only served us to do it right, to do it completely. Today, I am able to sleep in peace. The complete transformation in our lives has been absolutely incredible and utterly profound. I initiated the story by discussing the debts I had, and presently, we are actively engaged in the process of making investments. My dear friend and partner in this venture, we are investors. At this moment, we were able to contribute and provide assistance to individuals in need, which is also a very impressive principle that makes a difference in people's lives. Today, I feel at peace. Today, I sleep peacefully. We still face our life's challenges. It doesn't stop. But today, I can plan, organize myself to achieve, reaching new things every day.